If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this fantastic and fabulous episode fabulous. of Mind Pump, for about 20 minutes, uh, we do a little bullshitting. We talk about we Justin's never do that. plane trip. And uh, how he made an, a friend uh, with the person sitting next to him. This kid was super annoying, but he was a good kid too. And Justin had a good time with him. Yeah. We talk about how we use Brain FM uh, when we're on planes in turbulence and about the time I puked on the plane. And then we talk about mm. Justin's poop rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> Shitty rainbow. If you want to know what that's yeah. all about, you got to listen in. Lastly, we talk about my altercation with a homeless person. In France. Then we get into the questions. We talk about the science or lack of science behind food combinations for optimizing things like digestion, absorption, assimilation, and elimination. In other words, combining starches with fats and proteins with carbs and all this other stuff. Then we talk about juicing, vegetable and fruit juicing, the pros and the cons. Not juicing like steroid juicing. Then we cover weight set point and the theory behind it. Do you have a natural weight set point that your body just wants to hover around? Find out in this episode. Lastly, we talk about birth control and how it may be counterproductive to building muscle for some people and how it may actually help other people build muscle. All in this episode of Mind Pump. Finally, uh, MAPS Prime Pro is it's out now. Get yes. some. It is our newest program. If you want to learn all about it, mm. go to mindpumpmedia.com. Let's get to the root. And check it out. Adam, I'm so, on like Donkey Kong. Adam, do you sometimes feel like we're babysitting Justin? Most of the time. Like we're babysitting him? <laughs> we go on our trips and we're like yeah. taking the kid with us. <laughs> hey, you know. Behave, son. Yeah. yeah. The hell, man. I like to play. Remember that kid you became friends with on the air, on the airplane? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, I do remember that, that weird kid. I wish we could show that video without me looking like a total asshole. We can't because yeah, he's young. Know, How old was he? He was probably like fifteen. Nah, yeah, maybe like sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, this kid, this kid, we were on a plane, and this kid sitting next to Justin, and uh, he's just, the, and we're all fucking tired, dude. It's oh, late. Yeah. Yeah. We're tired. We I all was have over our, it. I did not want to sit next to anybody. We literally, like, before the plane took off, we're waiting in the airport, and all of us are downloading Brain FM sleep, like music. Like this is the, we're all gonna fall asleep on the plane. We're Which, so tired. by yeah. the way, I'll tell you right now, is magical for plane rides, dude. Oh, dude. oh I have to do that. Brain dude. the the, the del- especially the last one at Tampa, where I had to fly be- for five and a half hours between two people. Mm-hmm. Like, if it was not for that app, I swear to God, dude, yeah. that, <laughs> it would have been. Uh, well, I mean, worst Adam, trip ever. you sleep with your mouth open. <laughs> Which is dangerous around people like Justin. So anyway, it is dangerous. He, you know, so we're all like, oh, we're all so tired. We sit down, and we're like, oh man. And like, you and guys we got, were all together. I was we got, by myself. Yeah, we got A. We all had the A boarding. Like we got to board on first. So we're like, fuck, this is great. We get to pick yeah. our seats. We all sit down. We're all like, put on our headphones. Everybody's like, ready to go to sleep. And Justin made the mistake of taking a little too long. Yeah. To put his headphones I didn't on. Didn't put my headphones on just. Yet. Yeah, so he's like reading his magazine and stuff, and, and, and then on comes a fucking classroom of kids who yeah. I don't know where they came from. Like like somewhere in Ecuador or something. Something you know, like somewhere that. Somewhere in South America. And they were all these really smart, and I know this because the whole plane ride, they were all talking, but there was yeah. a, they were really smart kids. They were all just weird. They're all, yeah. maybe because they were so smart, you know what I mean? They're all yeah, kind of a little socially off. awkward. And this fucking kid. We play high school, what would you say? Yeah. Or, or high school? Yeah, high school. school. Yeah. yeah. And what I noticed was like, None of the kids, all of them were a little weird. They're all cool, great kids. No, they weren't like bad kids, but they're all a little different. Yeah. So and great listening to you try to be PC right it's now. It's not even about PC. No, you know what's funny? I'm not this. even, look. I'll, Bro, let's just be, they were a bunch of fucking weirdos, dude. Yeah, they were. They were but, a bunch of fucking yeah, but weirdos. They, but they weren't bad. Like, they weren't kids. I'd be no, like, fuck these kids. They no, were fine. Whatever, they're just no. a bunch of nerds. But anyway. They but, were off. But any, Oh, you know why? Because I identify with them. Anyway, so <laughs> they're coming on the plane, and there's one kid that none of the other kids want to sit next to. Oh, Remember? So he was Asian kid. He was looking around, like he's looking and looking, and like there's no seats. And he's like, uh, and the teacher's like, like, find a seat, dude. Yeah. He's like, where am I going to... sits in the middle and, seat right next to and me. And the only seat available was right next to Justin. So he Fuck. sits down next to Justin, and you can tell the other kids didn't want to sit with him for a reason. Yeah. So he sits next to Justin, and he just starts <laughs> talking to you, 
and he doesn't stop. He won't, he won't shut up. He does. He's telling yeah. you stories about what they did and where he went and yeah. what he likes to and eat. Like, oh, <laughs> and oh, fucking, cool. he's talking about math and science, like all over the place. So, so, and then there was like a like a second, like me and Adam are in the front, and mm-hmm. we're just dying because yeah. Justin's being very nice and he's he's engaging with the kid and. He's talking, and it's just you know Justin's tired because you can hear. His yeah, answer. we're all exhausted as fuck. So. An- Justin's answers become one like word. You know what I mean? Like yes, no, maybe because you can <laughs> Interesting. tell. Interesting. He's yeah. like stop, right? <laughs> yeah. So so then Adam turns around. <laughs> tell him about your pet shark. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, here we go. Because the you kid, know, I was like, I'm gonna play along. Because the kid finally got tired with him. Yeah, yeah, I guess he finally got the clue. Like after like 40 <laughs> it minutes, was, it was right when he started. He kind of stopped talking a little bit, and Adam turns around and goes, "Hey, Justin." Yeah. You should tell him about your pet shark. <laughs> yeah. So I go into the elaborate detail about this shark that I have this oh. special tank for and all this stuff. And he's like, whoa, that's so awesome. And then, and then he was like, uh, and then I jumped in and I said something to so him. about me being a black belt oh, in, yeah. in like uh, Wing Chung or I'm like, something. Hey, I'm like, Justin, were you able to bring your, your katana yeah. on the plane? The the one that you you know, you know studied with? He's like, no, I had to pack it. And so the kids keeps asking more yeah. questions. He was getting more and more impressed. Oh, dude, it was great. That's like one of those thought I was like this crazy like evil villain like mastermind well the wor- the, the worst thing though was me and adam are in the front and we're just dying of the stories that he's telling you but then we're laughing because then you realize we're laughing mm-hmm. and so then you start telling shit like you're making things up oh i was trying to make you guys laugh yeah, yeah with, well at that point it's him. like you just own it right because yeah. you're like okay i'm not getting out of this conversation i may as well have fun with it yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, like I, I kept getting more ridiculous thinking that he'd be like oh well you're just bullshit talking about how you ride he your was shark. believing me yeah. like like everything i said i was like wow this kid's so gullible he's like you ride your shark and you're like yeah you have to train him that I way i mean of course so we're dying of laughter well the other kids in the other seats one of them looks at us me and adam just laughing and he goes god isn't he annoying and i felt bad immediately i'm like no he's great i love i love his stories and we went back to laughing yeah so fuck oh i didn't know i didn't pick up on that yeah you, you uh, can, oh, I, I, I think one that. of the kids the other kid was punking him one of the kids oh fuck that kid exactly so yeah. that's when that's when we all no. like then we all started talking i'm having a good yeah. time but uh, boy, I'll that mother funny. bear that kid. Yeah, Fucking exactly. Like, no, I mean, you know, you're Justin. You're like the the. You're a great person around kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I've had training, so yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, I told you that we use the Brain FM, like the sleep mode on there. So I actually did a meditation one time. This was pretty cool on the plane. Yeah, it was one of our shorter flights. I don't know if this was Seattle or LA. I'll or... Tell you, remind me to tell you how I used meditation on the flight once. Oh, did you yeah. really? Oh yeah, but you go ahead first. I'll so. So I that I knew it was a short flight. I was like, oh, this is only going to be like an hour or whatever. I'm like, I, I'm not going to get like a deep sleep on this. So I put it on meditation and I thought, well, I'm going to, and I had people on both sides of me. So I was like another one of those situations where I'm not very comfortable, right? I'm just, those Southwest fucking chairs are not made for six foot three dudes, you know, so they're yeah. just, not at all. <laughs> they're not made for anybody. <laughs> so who are they made for? Yeah. I, I literally put, <laughs> I put brain FM meditation in, sat up postured up and like started doing like breathing and and core exercises sitting dude it was the most calming awesome plane ride literally ever was doing that and in i in the middle seat yes wow i sat up i i postured upright activated my core concentrated on these real deep breaths had the meditation playing in my ears that flight went by so fast and my body when i got up out of it felt so amazing i was like i've never got up out of a plane ride before and felt like that so i always use uh, meditation first on the plane and then if we have time then i'll put on the nap one or whatever but the one time when the meditation came in handy where were we when we took that small ass shitty plane and it was the it most- was from Spokane to to Seattle. I was believe. that what it was? Yeah, it was like one of those pond jumper planes it, where you get outside. It was like and fifteen to, seats you, on you the plane. About, like that was one of the worst. That's some of the worst that turbulence gnarly, I've ever. I've been on a dude. lot of flights. That was gnarly. one of the worst that we've I've ever. Been I have. On. Can I can I just be honest with you? We guys? dropped like a hundred feet. Just Bro, can I just be honest with you guys? I had major anxiety. Like yeah. for like I've never had anxiety like that. I thought, <laughs> and I knew logically like we're not gonna die, but yeah. it was so dramatic the turbulence where. If you didn't have your seatbelt on, you get thrown out of your chair. That's how bad it was. Uh, yeah. yeah. It was like, whoa. It was like going on a ride at Disneyland. And you hear everybody in the plane go, whoa. whoa, whoa. Yeah. There's a fucking lady crying right behind me. Yeah. She was literally crying because like, of the Come on, lady. Hold together. I get air sick really easily. So I'm late with my head back. I got meditation in my head, hell loud. Yeah. <laughs> and I have my eyes closed. If I open my eyes, I'm a puke. 
And it was like that for the whole fucking flight. That was horrible. Was you know, early. when it gets bad like that, I have this little thing that I replay in my head that a client said to me years ago, and she was a flight attendant for Southwest. And uh, I, I think I just came back one time from a trip, and I was sharing her like, "Oh my god, I was going through this turbulence, and I was just my heart stopped. I thought we, I thought we were crashing, and what that?" And she laughed at me, and she goes, "You know, like the the likelihood of what that is like, right?" And she goes, "Well, when you feel turbulence in the plane, that's like the, the same analogy of a car that's like." You know, five, five mile an hour going over speed bumps. Yeah, I know. You know, it's like you're you're driving that slow, that safe, and it's it's just you're going over speed bumps, and the likelihood of you crashing your car, you know, in that scenario is similar to the plane getting crashed. And then, so, and that starts happening to me. I'm like, we're just going over speed bumps. Yeah, I'm just going over, like yeah. I say it in my head, like uh. it's just a speed bump, Adam. It's just a speed bump. I, it, but when it goes on for like 15 yeah. minutes, I'm like, well, you Jesus Christ, about, there's enough speed bumps. Yeah, you just think about how many like plane crashes in the news. You know, you can even identify. It's like. So few, you and they're know, almost it makes major headline news, and so it's just like, come on, dude, this is like another. Well, the reality is, if, if that's you're, that's how I rationalize. If you're going it. down, don't fucking you're, like, yeah, yeah, you're done. You're not gonna feel yeah. shit. Yeah. You're, you're just you're gonna done. yeah, you're just gonna incinerate. But I, I, what really what gives me anxiety isn't necessarily that I'm afraid. It's the uh, like the air sick that I get, like the shaking and shit. Like, and I, I don't want to. I can't look outside because that makes it worse. So I just I have to close my eyes, otherwise I'm gonna puke. And so that's that's the that's my big fear mm. on the plane. Really? I yeah, I just don't like the because I have I've actually thrown up on a plane before. Do you not like really? roller coasters then? Uh-huh. Um, you know I I can and sometimes depends depends how I'm feeling. So if I go on one and I start to get a little motion sickness, then I won't go on anymore. But the worst is in cars, cars and planes and boats. Will get me uh, sick. Cars, especially mm-hmm. if we're going up winding road. That's why I always have to sit in the that's front. That's why of the you car. sleep right away. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. one, probably one of my just my defense mechanism yeah. is to go to sleep. But I have thrown up on a plane. But have you guys ever puked on a plane before? No. Yeah, I did. No. God, yeah, does your does your girl ever get annoyed tummy. by all the little things that you have to be sensitive about? No, I make up for it with other she- things. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> she, yeah, I'm thinking about all this stuff. I'm like, God damn, dude, you can't go to a restaurant, uh, fly on a plane, doing these things without something affecting something yeah, on your system. Yeah. She doesn't give give you a hard time ever? No, no. Like I said, I make up for it. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. we, uh, I, go, good I, thing. I was in Vegas, and I was with my cousins, and we went hard. Like, we went so hard. You ever go so hard? That one of the, someone disappears, like one of your party is gone. Yeah, you don't. Even and you're just like, it. we don't know where he yeah. is. Yeah, we'll we'll like, reconnect yeah. later. And you at the airplane, like you're waiting for your plane, and you're like, he's not gonna make the fucking plane. And right as you're boarding, you see his ass running up, <laughs> with like, you know, like that's that was this trip. Like that's how hard we went. Yeah, we get, did that one time. I get on the plane and I'm still a little drunk. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I'm mm-hmm. still kind of feeling good. So I'm like, eh, I'm a little drunk. But then it wears off and hangover starts to set in as we're flying and. Ugh. then on top of it, it was hella turbulent, and I fought it the entire way from Vegas to San Jose up until we landed. We landed, and I'm like, Ugh, I'm fighting it still. I'm like, I made it. Just got to get out of the plane. Just got out of the plane. And those fuckers left us in the plane for like 30 minutes because they had to wait for a you know, little, little, taxi yeah, little taxi or whatever. Couldn't do it anymore, bro. I opened up the little fucking barf bag, which, by the way... Who barfs that only that much? That is not enough. Yeah. yeah. Was it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Come on, dude. What the I'm fuck like, is that? Rah! So, so <laughs> I, it's like, but I knew know, this ahead of time. It's like a bucket. I knew this ahead of time. I looked at the sailor. Like, I'm going to need like two or three of these. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked the people around me and I was just like, you can spew, burr, spew in this. And, I just yeah. it and then I'm like, what do I do with this? Like the, can like you just hold on to it? Like they're walking, they're not walking around anymore. Everybody's about to get up and get <laughs> out. So I fucking just left it. Like, Oh, no, you did it. Yeah, I got, dude, I got a I doggy doing? bag. So yeah. you know they went through the plane to clean it like this gross. motherfucker. <laughs> That's so gross. Found a bag of... Uh, <laughs> That's disgusting. Uh, throw up. Mm, throw up is grosser than poop. I mean, it it's is, like... The, uh, it's bad. Like, man. would you rather find a bag of puke or a, a bag of poop? It's a close human second. Human poop? Yeah, it's a close second. human poop, dude. Come Wait on, Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why? What poop is wor- not bad? Like, human poop, I guess, Human is poop is the worst. Yeah. Did I, did I tell you guys what happened uh, when I was, like, at this coffee shop in downtown Santa Cruz? Like, there's been this problem with, like, uh, vagabond, you know, people, like, that have come in and they set up c- camps and stuff. And so there's, like, all these, like, angry bums kind of roaming around. <laughs> 
And so we're like, <laughs> sitting welcome there, to Santa Cruz. Right? Hello. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's regulate this. <laughs> anyway. So we're sitting at this like nice coffee shop. I'm inside. There's nobody in there. Like we went at a time. It was like three in the afternoon. And so I'm sitting there with my friends. We're chatting, whatever. And we we're going to go, you know, get something to eat after that. And we're talking and all of a sudden, like some, some homeless character guy comes by, you know, the window and we're staring out this window and he looks at us and there's literally only us in this place. And he takes this, this ratty, like clothing item and he smashes it onto the window and then he smears it up across and it was his human shit. No. Yeah. No. His shit. And then he ran. And I was just like, shitty rainbow. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is like a sketch from from heaven. This yeah. is like ridiculous. Like who fucking does this? He actually smeared his poop. He smeared his poop, right? Like right where we were. So we had this the rainbow fuck? of shit to look at as we're drinking our coffee. I'm like, thank you, sir. You know, <laughs> how you long know? did you did you stay there? I couldn't Bro, we just we, we we look over at each other and we couldn't believe it. And then we told the manager there, we're like, hey, this guy he put some shit on your window. And like, he was like, like, what do you mean? And one of the guys <laughs> laughed, and then the other guy got so pissed off. And he's like, Oh, I'm calling the call. He's like yelling outside, he's getting all pissed off. He's like, That fucker, you know. It was crazy. Now, yeah. does somebody like when something like that happens, like, does this guy deserve an ass will thing like what how does that what i think he's i mean he's meant there's mental pro, like the first off the whole uh, well he took off so he's i was just like oh yeah i don't even want to get near he's that guy i would get like some kind of yeah. weird I, you know i think you have to right yeah you are most infection. most homeless people um when they do you know when they people do surveys and tests or whatever most of them have serious mental issues and then that right there is it really that high of a percentage? Very high, mm -hmm. really. Very, very high percentage of homeless uh, people have mental illness, hundred percent. So when sometimes you see some of them and you're like, ah, you know, just go yeah. work and get a job, they have a tough time just being on Earth. You know what I mean? A yeah. lot of them, they just they have problems and they probably need to be institutionalized. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. You know? But when you start getting crazy and doing shit like that, dude, like somebody's got to regulate. Bro, I I had to handle one. I actually had to deal with one. Uh, I thought I was going to have to, like, am I going to have to physically have a physical altercation? Because the worry with that I had, it, it, this guy wasn't necessarily, here, I'll tell you the story first and then you, I'll, I'll tell you what's going on in my mind. So I went to France uh, years ago with, um, at the time, my wife and some friends and we had a layover and we missed our train and the next train was in the morning so we kind of had we had to spend the night uh, at the station and then they kicked us out of the station at like 4, four or 5 a.m. for cleaning so we take all of our bags and stuff and sleep outside or stay outside the station well uh we're sitting there with our stuff and we left our stuff for a second a homeless dude just comes over and just kind of Sits on our bag, just kind of chilling right there. He's sitting on your bag. Yeah, sitting on my backpack. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, and I'm claimed. Well, yeah. if, well, if you think, I don't think he was claiming it. I think we were just in his spot. Oh, I see. I think that's his I where he lived, right? Yeah, yeah. So he's chilling there, and it, and I felt zero like physical threat. The guy wasn't big; he was homeless and whatever. So I'm like, he's not probably gonna do hungry. It. Yeah, he ain't gonna get away with anything if he tries to grab my stuff. So I walk over. I'm like, hey man, you're on our stuff. And he looks at me and he goes, this, he goes, this is my stuff. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh here, here we go. Like, what am I going to do? Like, if I do, I, I don't want to physically like, do anything with him because that's uh, mine. What if he's got like a needle on him or something? Yeah, like no, that? this is exact. This is the exact predicament that I was uh, saying when I said, like, well, what do you, does a guy deserve an ass whooping like in a situation like this? Like, what do you do? Like, that's got to be such a tough one. You got to be careful because because yeah, no, I get it. You're, if they have a needle on them or if you yeah. catch a disease or something, right? So I'm like, oh man, what am I going to do? So I'm like, listen, man. You need to leave, get off our stuff, or I'm gonna have to like pull you off. Like I'm gonna have to push you off and whatever. And weird thing was he spoke uh, broken English, by the way. This is in France, which is kind of cool. So he's like, you know, no, I'm not gonna leave. I'm not gonna leave. So I'm like, fuck. Like, so I'm, I turn to my wife and I turn to my friends. I'm like, do, do I just grab him? Like, and they're like, well, maybe you should look for a police officer. I'm like, fuck. Like, what if he takes our stuff? Like, what am I gonna do? So he had a box of wine next to him mm. that he had set down on the floor. <laughs> See, we can grab that. Yeah. So I did this wide loop so he didn't know I would be coming around him. So I walked away, did this wide loop, snuck up behind him, grabbed his wine, and then he freaked <laughs> out. Yeah. Give that back. And I said, if you don't leave our stuff, I'm going to pour all this wine on the floor. <laughs> 
Like, because I know this is important. To I him. think that was a good play. Yeah, that's a good and so, I think that was a good play right there. So he got up, and I took his Tisk wine, for and I set it on the floor like hella far away. So he took the wine, and he left. then he left us alone. And then here's the best part: he comes back with like five other <laughs> homeless people, <laughs> and they're just walking around us. And I'm like, we're gonna get jumped by homeless people. Oh, this is gonna be God. terrible. They got a gang. Yeah, and yeah. so, but luckily they didn't. They didn't do anything, and we ended up. Making it out of there, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was my worry. Uh, my worry was like, well what? played, sir. Yeah. Well played. Like, what do you do? Because you're gonna have to grab him. Almost no, no, I think fist I, of cuffs. And I don't want to. I don't want to hit the poor guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. My thought would be grab him because I could easily grab him, subdue hey, Chris him. Chris Rock was a shake the shit out of him and hold him, and, right? But then what if you grab him and like <laughs> shake the shit out of someone like you know, that? What if he's got uh, like a needle or something and he pokes you? You know what I mean? Oh funny. shit! I got that hepatitis. Just sounds funny. Right there. Maybe he's got yeah. a. Could you imagine he pulls a needle out and like running at you? Like I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, that happens. <laughs> yes, it does, dude. Yeah. That I talk to police officers who've been poked by by needles and shit like that. That's true, dude. Well, no. I could see that with Yikes. a police officer. Yeah. I, could, I could get these. That's true. Or could. poop. Here's another one. Yeah. Like you know, in prison, like in prison, like prisoners, who, if they want to fuck with the prison guards and shit, they'll throw their shit at them because poop's got diseases and stuff in yeah, it. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, you don't want poop on you. No, dude. You, <laughs> you could probably hold up a bank with poop. Bring yeah. on the shitty bird, Whoa. please. <laughs> Step right up, all you bearded men and all you bearded ladies. This quad is brought to you by Big Top Beard Company, whose all-natural beard oil products not only make your beard smell amazing, but feel amazing, too. Their organic essential oil blends transport you to manly places like the mountains, the desert, the sea, and beyond, all while encouraging a lot of beard nuzzling to boot. Mm. Buy it for yourself or as a gift for that special bearded someone at BigTopBeardCompany.com. Enter the discount code Mind Pump for 33% off at checkout. First up is from Brooke Donut Girl. What are your thoughts on food combinations for optimizing digestion, absorption, assimilation, and elimination? She has read articles that say you should not eat proteins and starches together. So this, uh, when I first saw this question about 15 minutes ago, it, uh, it reeked of... Uh, like pseudoscience, right? It just sounds like pseudoscience. Like, don't combine foods because it's not going to... I'm like, this is silly. Like, what are they talking about? So I did a little bit of research. And in Ayurvedic medicine and Chinese medicine, this is a very big thing. They'll tell you specifically to avoid combining particular foods because they affect uh, digestion. They can cause uh, bloating. They can cause issues with how you assimilate food. And so I looked a little deeper because, I, and I've said this before, when you have these ancient uh, ways of wellness and health, like Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine, which have been around longer than Western medicine, I'm not saying they're better, I'm just saying they've been around longer, that a lot of their methods uh, stand the test of time. And what I mean by that is if you have something, you know, Chinese medicine is thousands of years old. If something is just plain false or doesn't work at all or does the opposite of what it says, over those thousands of years, the Chinese medicine practitioners will eliminate it and other things will be put in place that tend to work, which is why when you look at like Ayurvedic medicine and Chinese medicine recommendations with like herbs, you know, where they say, you know, if you're stressed, take uh, ashwagandha, right? Ashwagandha is great for stress. It helps your body deal with stress. Well, now Western science is actually showing that it does in fact have this, you know, these these uh, stress fighting effects in the body where it kind of helps your body reach homeostasis depending on if, you know, certain hormones are too high or too low or whatever. So they were actually right in the way that they explained it. And you see this with a lot of stuff that's in both Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine. So when I saw that both of them, both those methodologies are big on this, I said, okay, I wonder if there's something to this. So I looked a little deeper and I found this Dr. Pickering who um, is a big proponent of this. And he talks about how eat, how some foods uh, need to need certain types of digestive um, uh, you know digestive acids and enzymes which may be counterproductive to other types of foods. For example, if you eat lots of starches that may uh, produce more of an alkaline uh, effect in the stomach whereas uh, foods that are high in proteins, uh, and fats may require more of an acidic effect in the stomach. And so eating one first over the other one may cause problems. So 
Is there some truth to this? I'm not sure. I think it's pretty cool. I think I want to well, look into it. Well, I, I right away things that sound fishy to me is words like optimize, right? So optimize digestive absorption. Like what exactly does that mean? Like we know that if you pair uh, any carbohydrate, whether it be a starch or any other carb for that matter, with a protein or a fat, you're going to lower the glycemic index, which is basically how fast that food gets converted over into blood sugar, right? Or it converted over into glucose, excuse me. So if that's the case, like, of course, like the faster it's being uh, digested and processed into your body, it just makes sense that that would be healthy. But then there's also detriments to that also because it does. Then it's then you spike insulin, mm -hmm. which and then now your body's in a state where it's ready to store fat. So there's I could see there's pluses and minuses to both to, to either either or. Yeah, I so mean, you gotta, you, it, so when you say that's word, a great point. So when you say that. optimize digest, sure. I mean, I could get where having it, you know, a food that's faster on the, or higher on the glycemic index is going to get digested quicker and converted over to glucose faster. Therefore, the body doesn't have to work as hard. So that makes sense to me. Uh, how you could try, you could, you know, put this together. But then I also think there's uh, detriments to that, and I think there's benefits to pairing it with a protein or a fat to slower or lower the glycemic index. So there's pluses and minuses to both. I that, think. And now, th now mm. that's a very good point, very interesting point. Um, but then we read some of these new studies that are come out, coming out with these uh, continual glucose monitors, mm -hmm. and they're finding that the individual um, variance, var variance yeah. is like – Trumps that. It completely yeah. trumps it. Well, like, that's, right. that's where I'm, you know, most of my thought process is going in that direction with most of this, these ideas. And this may be something that has validity with like certain individuals, but completely not in other individuals. And, you know, I, I was thinking about this. There's another philosophy. I remember somebody talking about like, uh, like what the order of food that you eat and, and all that, as far as digestion purposes, do you know much about that Sal? as far as like, you know, loading it up with like cruciferous vegetables first and then kind of like stacking. I, I don't know much about this. I think for I find the purpose of like digestive enzymes and things like that. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, it, see all that stuff. All makes, that stuff. It's like, yeah, it, it makes it, sense to me. It does. Well, let me ask yeah. you guys this. It's like have logical. You, have you guys noticed that if you eat a particular food or particular type of food that you prefer to have this other type of food with it yeah, to yeah, help absolutely what have you guys noticed see that's why right away this is funny to me because i find like when i have something like chicken or steak having it with a ri rice or a sweet potato i actually find it complements the digestive process for me mm -hmm. than the other way around so if you just eat chicken by itself without yeah, uh, all by the it's, rice you yeah. don't digest it as well yeah Hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I wonder, and, if and I also have always feel like when I have a big bowl of vegetables too, like with my meal, it makes a difference too. Like there's, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, I mean, I even know, I, I the biggest though out of all those has nothing to do with the food combination. I notice the difference from sitting down and eating versus eating, and then making sure I get up right away and move, like. Just oh, yeah. gravity and what it ha the role it Getting plays moving the role yeah, yeah the role oh, it plays, plays in the di in, in in the digestive process. I find uh, trumps all food combinations like. You know, being a guy who's yeah. tracked and weighed and measured and been so crazy about all this stuff, I played with so many different combinations of, you know, pairing certain fats with proteins and carbs and mixing them all up and bowl, large bowls of veggies before or after. I've done all this stuff. And personally, for me, like the biggest out of all of them, like moving, moving after consuming food. When you talk about the digestive process and how the how my body feels afterwards, to me, that's the greatest out of all of them. It makes that, a huge. It makes such yeah. a big difference that this is actually a big area uh, that uh, of issues of problems that astronauts have. Like when astronauts go into space, they have a lot of unique problems oh, yeah, because of the zero the gravity. Forces, yeah, because yeah. of zero gravity. Like they'll lose muscle, bone mass. Like they have to exercise every day just to stop. So they have to physically sort of like massage, uh, you know, some of the digestive process. Or? It's there's there's a lot. I'm not quite sure what they have to do. Aside, what I do know though is that digestive issues are prevalent because they don't have gravity. There's a reason why your butthole is at the bottom of your body <laughs> yeah. and right. your Coming mouth is hot. at the top. Yeah. It's because if it were the other way around, it would be very difficult to digest because gravity plays a huge role right. in the the well, it's well, so so much to the point. That, I mean, and this is what really Mind Pump has always been about is 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 teaching people the bigger rocks, right? Uh, in these things, and I'm not saying that this this article might not be true or there's not some validity to it. 
Um, I do know that we've seen enough with uh, people like Euron and the glucose monitors and the difference and variance of individuals that, uh, you know, a cookie affects one person this way and then affects another person totally different, like as bad as a yam or a yam looks as bad as a cookie for another person. Well, I'll so- tell you what's crazy for me. So I, um, I've always been very sensitive to carbohydrates. So if I eat a lot of them, I'll get real kind of sleepy and lethargic afterwards. Which tells me that I, you know, like I'm sensitive to them, so I kind of I would save them for later on in the evening if I had them, or I wouldn't eat them at all. Ever since I uh, did that whole cl- that whole you know herbal cleanse, if you call, I hate fucking calling it that because now I sound like one of those yeah. uh, those you know charlatans. But Detox. Where, yeah, where I did uh, I took like wormwood and black walnut and all those things to you know cleanse. I kind of hate using that cleanse my body. Um, my gut health has been a lot better. And my tolerance for things has has changed. So, like, if I eat starches and stuff now, I don't get that same effect where I feel like I'm lethargic afterwards at all. I can eat now a little bit of carbohydrates at lunch, and I don't feel like I need to take a nap afterwards like I did before. And my tolerance for caffeine is a lot better. Very interesting. So, uh, and, and Rob Wolf was speculating on why some people, because in these studies, what he, what they found, which is really mind blowing is you have people who will have a higher insulin spike and blood sugar spike with like a fat than they would with like a cookie. And he couldn't figure it out like what it was. And it wasn't fats in general. It would be like a particular food. Like I ate an avocado and I get this crazy spike in insulin and then I ate this banana and I didn't get one at all, which makes no sense whatsoever until you start to examine the potential immune response that that person may be having. Mm. So if you have an immune response, then that causes the liver to shoot out uh, glycogen, and that'll cause your blood sugar to spike. So I'm wondering if for me, um, that's what happened, is I was having these immune responses from having inflamed gut. Yeah. I did that whole process. say, from it, it being permeable from you know the leaky gut where it goes in, it identifies some of these nutrients as like a potential threat and it creates this sort of- And I, my liver b- yeah, just jumped, you know, and I got this like blood ru- sugar rush and this crash, hmm. and now I don't necessarily get that as much. As far as food combinations are concerned, if I eat a heavy fat protein meal- I almost always have some kind of uh, a high fiber, leafy green vegetable source because uh, it really makes a big difference with my digestion. As far as order of food that I eat, what I've done in the past is I've always eaten what I thought was the most important food first. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So because muscle building and exercise and all that stuff was always my priority, the first thing I would eat would be my protein and my fat. So it would always be like my meat first, and then I would move on to my other stuff. Now, I, growing up in an Italian household, we never ate meat first. It was always bread carbs, and pasta. Starch. Yeah. Starch came first. Uh, the meat came after. Um, now, listening to my body and really being in tune with it, if to be quite honest, I... I probably better off eating the vegetable first. That's what I do. Do yeah. you really? Yeah, I eat vegetables first. Yeah. If it's there. And I've done when I do it that way, I notice that my digestion seems uh, a little bit better. But this is pretty interesting uh, stuff. I, I I'm going to look a little deeper into it so I can g- give a l- little bit better advice, but I will say this, on the long list of things that you should pay attention to, it's towards the bottom. It's yeah, yeah it's towards the bottom. I, it's like meal timing. I mean, you talked on the on your gut, which I think is important too, and that's definitely someone I think a lot of people can relate to that. But I literally, I challenge anybody who hasn't done this is, you know, make a conscious effort, like literally make an effort that every time you eat that go for a little five to 10 minute walk, literally five to 10 minutes, doesn't have to be that long. Just as soon as you're done eating, don't just go lay down and watch TV or just sit at the desk and go back to work. Make a conscious effort to walk for five to 10 Mm -hmm. minutes and watch how amazing you feel. Yeah, the movement helps digestion. Uh, Remember when you're walking, your your pelvis is shifting. So all the... All of the digestive and chew organs. Chew your food more. Chew your food, yeah, definitely. Uh, all your digestive organs are there in the movie. And what a lot of people don't realize is some of these deep hip flexor muscles are right on top of and around the your some of your digestive uh, organs. So when you're uh, when you're walking and you're activating muscles like your psoas, for example, it's actually massaging uh, these digestive organs and helping helping the digestive process. This is why uh, when you have like appendicitis, for example, one of the tests that they'll do to see if you have appendicitis is they'll do a psoas test. They'll actually have you contract your psoas, and if it causes lots of pain, because it's sitting right there, right on top of your appendix, 
if there's so uh, they can rule it out. Yeah, if there's lots of like severe pain with just trying to flex your psoas, then it might it, it might it, just be the psoas. Then it, no, yeah. no. Then oh. the likelihood is it it it'll, it'll, it's appendicitis. Oh, because, because it's protecting it's sit, it. It's sitting right on top of it. Hmm. So that's like one way to push on the appendix is, oh, to, is to contract that muscle. So walking post and in all all the old cultures do it too. By the way, all the old cultures like Mediterranean cultures, uh, Asian cultures. They all uh, have a ritual of after having dinner or whatever, having a big meal, is you go for a nice it's walk. It's 100% been one of the biggest game changers for myself personally. And it and I really didn't uh, make a conscious effort to do it until I got into my 30s, until later on when I was trying to stay leaner and, and these were little. And it's a great way to burn an extra few calories. It's a, I think it's a, it's a win all the way around, you know, and it, it's just it you have to create the habit, though, first because it's. It we're as a, Americans, we're the opposite. I mean, it's if you really start paying attention, and I always challenge my clients to do this stuff. Is like you know, hey, pay pay attention when you're these foods. Like when we enjoy some of the things like wine or cheeses or desserts or stuff that you know we consider bad foods. You know what really kills us is we just tend to do it at the worst times. You know, it's like we not only are we were we lazy all day, but then we decide to have this big meal and then we follow it up with a dessert and then we decide to sit and watch TV. It's like, well, fuck. If you actually just made the conscious effort to get up and yeah, walk right around before bed, yeah, right, like exactly. So if you actually just made this conscious effort to to burn and use and stand up afterwards and walk and move and help that digestive process, like that all will make a big, big difference if you if you make. You sound like a bunch of old men. <laughs> oh my yeah, God, we're talking about walking yeah. after eating. Little by little, our conversations like, are turning. You know, into you should poop. probably you know eat at like four thirty. Yeah, for yeah. dinner, because uh, dude, I wish I had. I, I like to take a nap. Yeah, before I, eat. Like, I get the early bird special. I wish I, I wish I had some of the gems that we drop on this show back when. Oh, I was in absolutely, my early twenties. Because I, I was, just find it hilarious. Because it's like you I know, know it does it's all those out. things that you're like, oh, you old man, whatever, dude. Yeah. I remember. Well, do you remember being a trainer? And actually, I used to. I actually used to laugh at people that used to say that when I'd ask them, "Do you exercise? Do you do this?" And they're like, "Oh, I make sure I go on all these walks." And I'd be like, oh, "They're not. They're not exercising. Walks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I used to scoff at it. Like, yeah. I like, come on, like you know, like, salads. Where now I'm the opposite. Like when I start, I'm like, I tell people, like, "Listen, just start with a walk. You know, like yeah. if you don't walk at all, let's start with that. You know, and we'll build on that." <laughs> so, I just remember as a kid hearing the old, like the older people in my family. They were probably in their fifties, and they'd be talking about how like. Uh, oh, I can't eat that. I get constipated. My digestion. Oh, I, don't feel, like oh, I took a nice topic. Oh, I took day, a poop yeah. the other day. I felt yeah. so good. I remember thinking, like, like the why fuck are you, talking are you guys about talking this? about? Yeah. Like a poop. Yeah. Who cares? And all, as you get older, you're like, that's yeah. everything. Oh my god, I had such good <laughs> sleep. My and, entire, you know, it's like I always get sleep. My entire day is <laughs> yeah. based on if my morning poop was good. Yeah. <laughs> totally. If I had a good poop, I'm having a good day. If I didn't have heartburn all day. I've been fucking. I'm a champion. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm killing it. Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. Next up is Elizabeth Marie Fit. Can you talk about juicing? Yes. Juice, juice up, bro. Yeah, initially, yes. when Doug yeah. like, said this question, we're like, steroids? Like, what? We just, we just talked about steroids. Like, now we're talking no, about vegetable and fruit juice. juice. Yeah, you know, uh, someone asked me this. A reason why I picked this question, because I got asked this just uh, recently, and it, I thought, you know what? We talked about this on the show, but it has, it's has it been a long time. We came out like, fuck, this was early, early episodes, I think in the early hundreds, where we... Uh, talked about uh, antioxidant drinks mm-hmm. and super super juices and detox goji berry juices yeah and all, that all, shit. all those uh, juices out there and then also your you know like your Jack Lalanne juicer or whatever and the oh, right. yeah and and juicing Don't you dare your, talk shit about Lalanne juicing all your fruits hero. and He's vegetables and Mount uh, Rushmore you know so here's and what we what we discussed and what we talked about with juicing is that uh, nothing is going to replace whole foods. There's just bottom line. And, you know, if you have a friend or you have somebody who's done like some juicing protocol and they talked about all the great health benefits. Oh, my God, I felt so amazing. Oh, this like, oh, it's just more than anything else. It's 
that person was probably completely deficient. Yes, yeah. deficient in all these vitamins and minerals that are provided through fruits and vegetables. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden they're squeezing thousand times the value of what they what they even need. Yeah. And so their body is is reaping the benefits of that. It's like a sponge. It's like, oh yeah, finally some nutrients. Right. Like, oh like, my God, I haven't yeah, seen vitamin right C in fucking stream. three months. Yeah. You know, and like I just got a whole fucking shit ton of it. Like I feel great. Like, like flood the system. So when it comes to so juicing and Initially, uh, it didn't really get mainstream or semi-mainstream appeal until, I think, the 1930s. And, yeah, what did make it popular? Uh, there was a guy who invented the juicer and like eating uh, is the hard. first juicer. And then Jack yeah. Elaine was yeah. a big proponent of it. And Jack Elaine, as we all know, is like the godfather of fitness um, and very, very healthy man. There are some, some benefits to juicing. And here's, here's where they are. Here's where they start and kind of end. Uh, if you need a concentrated source of a particular nutrient, uh, this is one of the better ways to get it. So if you have a nutrient deficiency, like you know vitamin A or you need vitamin C, and this is how juicing was used for a little while. It was medicinal. Mm. Like, oh, you, you, know, you need more vitamin A or you know, you're, you're low on vitamin A. Well, they didn't really use supplements back then. So what they would do is they'd say, okay, take these particular vegetables, juice them and drink them so that you're consuming – you know, thousands of milligrams of a, of a vitamin that in order for you to get before, you'd have to eat bushels and bushels and bushels of this vegetable that you could know you, you wouldn't be able to do uh, any other way. Now, that being said, uh, if, if unless you're doing this for a particular reason, like a specific, like I said, you have a specific deficiency or something you're working on, I don't see any other benefit of it because what you're doing is you're taking a fruit or vegetable that has all these amazing uh, health benefits and, and ingredients and chemicals and stuff that are in the plants naturally, and you're throwing away a nice chunk of them when you throw away the the, the fiber of the fruit or the or the vegetable or the plant material. Right, the cell wall of it. You're squeezing out the fluid, but then you're throwing away. So it's like you're taking a big piece of it and you're throwing it away. Not only that, but you uh, increase its uh, sugar content uh, dramatically, because again, now you're consuming, you know, like one carrot doesn't have very much sugar in it at all. But if you drink a big glass of carrot juice, you've consumed the sugar of several carrots, more than most people would eat at one sitting. And so now you're getting into the kind of, you know, if it's good for you, great, but more isn't always better. Yeah. Um, fruit juice is the worst. Fruit juice, I never recommend yeah, it's anybody like pure drink. Sugar, yeah. There's no reason to drink fruit juice. You you're 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 taking fruit which is healthy and then you're turning it into a sugar drink. Hmm. You know, a glass of apple juice is something like twenty something grams of sugar and is like, you know, six or seven or ten apples in one glass. When nobody would ever eat that many apples at one sitting, right. it's, and, and and so you, you get some detriments from it uh, from doing that. Well, and there's just a digestive process that we're sort of skipping by like like shredding all this like fibrous fruit and vegetables and then um you know just having everything be a liquid and easy to process and you know like it, you need that the timing of all that that's important you know for your for your stomach to to really process well so. there's a lot of natural checks and balances that w- we have in nature mm-hmm. and uh i think it's all due to evolution right we evolve we co-evolved with our environment and so if, if I'm a human and I go and uh, I chew on, you know, the bark or whatever of a white willow tree, mm-hmm. there's a certain amount of uh, a, a chemical that is very, very closely related to aspirin. In fact, I believe it's the base of aspirin, or maybe a little bit different. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to get some pain relief. The, my ability to consume enough of that bark to give me an overdose effect is difficult because it's limited by the amount of bark that I right. can chew. But yeah. you can do it through opening up those pill bottles and freaking swallowing them. Or if I took the bark and processed the shit out of it and extracted whatever. Now And so nature kind of... Now, of course, there's lots of things in nature that can poison you. But you know, you look at fruits and vegetables. N- number one, in nature, fruits and vegetables, you find some... Uh, sometimes, and then there's a long, long periods of time where you don't find some, and you don't find them in concentrations like you would Mm-mm. after we learned how to farm. Like there, never, never in nature would you walk and then come upon an orchard of apple trees or rows and rows of spinach and broccoli and all that stuff. It just didn't happen in nature. You find them, you forage, you find. So there was that limiting factor. Well, there was there was a limiting factor that fruit was probably never consumed. Uh, 
frequently in mass amount. It was consumed in mass amount when we found it. We ate the fuck out of the bush of whatever, but that was it. And we didn't find more. And hmm. vegetables uh, and fruits don't look the way they do now because we bred them to be these calorie yeah, starch this bombs. Monster, yeah. Like uh, sugar. You, is- you can look at paintings from the Renaissance era where uh, at the time it was real popular to paint like fruits, uh, you know, pictures of fruit. And they'll be painting like apples and whatever. They don't look like what the, we eat now. They're tiny. No, an apple is much smaller. And when you cut it in half, it's like full of seeds yeah. and fiber. You have to work your way through all that stuff. We bred it to become, to reduce its fiber content. We breed them to be sweet. And, you know, when a fruit tastes sweet, that's because it's its highest fruit. Uh, that's well, when it has its higher sugar content. Yeah. Like, yeah, keep reproducing those and planting those. And having all this flesh. Mm. You know what I mean? Look at corn. Corn is a great one. Natural corn was like one singular uh, spindle or string with like you know sporadic kernels up all along it. That was a corn. That was a that was a, a corn plant. Now you've got this starch bomb. You know this this huge cob of just tons of, of corn kernels all around it, packed full of starches. And that's because we learned how to breed them that way. Mm. So there's all these natural checks and balances. And one of the checks and balances is your ability to chew the food. Eat it and the about the room in your stomach. Yeah. Now I can't fit fifteen apples in my stomach, but I can drink fifteen apples worth of juice. And isn't it interesting that like all these different condensed supplements and pills, like their whole thing in, in the marketing of it is is you know having this sort of uh, lining over it, so that way it it has this time to release. Uh, to it, so it's like they're they're trying to emulate a lot of these things that you're bypassing by not like chewing through, you know, the the fibrous yeah. fruit or vegetable. Yeah, food now, has a very uh, food does that naturally. Naturally releases naturally does shit that. stuff yeah. when you're supposed to. Yeah. Now with clients, I I would allow them to do this like this, and this is where where I where I do and I don't like juicing. I don't like juicing used as a weight loss strategy or you know I'm going to try and have a juice every day like that's a good goal to have or something. I try and teach my clients to learn to assess their eating habits, right? So, like right now, uh, those that follow my story show that, like, every, know that every week I post uh, my food rotation. So I'll look at like, oh wow, it's been a long time since I've had spinach, kale, or like a good green veggie with lots of iron in it. Like I haven't done something like that in you know three or four days i just happen to be at whole foods i'm picking up my eggs this morning for breakfast i'm gonna have maybe i'll order a green smoothie you know a green juice from the whole foods whatever and get a juice like that so that has uh, obviously a ton of kale and spinach or whatever it is that i'm looking for so because you notice that you're not getting a, a certain or a specific nutrient in your diet on a regular basis, and then you're at a place where I can get it done, or I have that at home and I haven't had an opportunity maybe to make it and I go, hey, you know what? This morning, I'm going to start my day off with a great big green smoothie because the last two days I've been really low on my greens and I haven't had any in my diet for whatever the reason may be. And so I'm aware of that. Therefore, I do something like this to impl- implement that into my routine. But it it's intermittently put in there based off of what you're eating or not eating on a regular mm-hmm. basis. So I kind of teach that for my clients. Like, hey, because some of them like it, enjoy it. And some of them notice that they don't get enough of certain foods. And, and if you're using it uh, intermittently throughout the diet like that, I have less of a problem with it where I don't, I think when people make it a goal or use it as a weight loss strategy, I think is where they go wrong. There's a, there's actually been cases of people and you, you have to really push it to do this, but like anything, you know, people are like, oh, it's healthy. So I'm going to do it all the time and do a lot of it. There's been cases of people getting uh, vitamin overdose or toxicity from some of the fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A from drinking too many uh, like kale juices where they'll just drink mm-hmm. four smoothies a day or whatever and just pound kale over and over again and then end up getting these symptoms of uh, toxicity because they're, they're consuming way more nutrients what else than they ever kale? would be is able to do. Iodine? K, uh, vitamin K. I think, I think there might be iodine. I, I've heard of people like having too much iodine from, from just this overconsumption of kale. Drink a ton of carrot juice over a period of time and you'll notice your skin will start to turn orange. That's mm. from the beta carotene. Yeah. Right? So, uh, yeah, I personally will eat, will drink a vegetable juice every once in a while, but I'll do it purposely for its concentration of nutrients. Right, like I was saying. Like yeah, you're, exactly. You, you knew you were missing these types of mm-hmm. nutrients, yeah. and so I'm going to get a concentrated form because I know I've been lacking it. Mm-hmm. It makes sense that way to me. Happy, healthy, and free. Is the weight set point legitimate? 
So the weight set point uh, theory is this? A, it's still a theory. It's not. This is something that's debated. Um, it is. It's. So there's a lot of confusion around it uh, because maybe that's where the debate is. Because uh, marketers in the whole diet uh, and weight loss uh, industry, for a little while here in like the '90s, this was like a big thing where they were like, change your weight, your weight set point. Like the reason why you lose weight and gain it is because you don't move the set oh, point. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And that was, that was all market. You know that again. Leave it to the fitness industry to take a little good information, a little bit of a little bit of truth, market the fuck out of it, and then now everybody's confused. No, here's your okay. So that what they would say is, they'd say, you know, we'll change this. Our program is is different because it changes your set point, and then you never gain weight again because that's your new natural weight and blah blah blah. So here's why I think your weight set point, uh, or the, at least the way they talk about, it is bullshit. First off, there is of course a natural weight set point. Uh, but there's a healthy set point. And the reason why it doesn't make that big of a difference is all you got to do is look around. Look around every day, Americans. If the weight set point was really powerful, we would not have <laughs> all these overweight crazy people. obesity <laughs> walking around. Because I can guarantee you- can you, override it. I can apparently. guarantee you yeah. they, they, didn't, uh, they, they weren't born with genes that said, hey, your natural weight set point is 275 <laughs> uh, at five foot six. Like that yeah. doesn't, That's not the case. Your natural weight set point you will find when you lead a very healthy lifestyle. Uh, I'm myself starting to really figure out that my body has a range that it likes to sit at, and it's about 187 to about 190, 192. Now, I can make it go above and below that by manipulating factors like exercise and nutrition. Like if I push muscle building, I can go in the, in the 190s, 200s, and above. But if I just listen to my body and do what I think is right for it that to feel good, which includes resistance training and cardio sometimes and you know eating a particular way, it just likes to settle right around there. And that's what they find. What they find is if you lead a really healthy lifestyle that you'll find this kind of weight set point. Now that being said, there's a weight your, your weight set point is based on your lifestyle. So your natural weight set point may be at obese if you're leading, a lifestyle that leads to that, you know what I'm saying? So when people are like, hey, no matter what I do, my, my body weight's at 250. I'm just overweight and there's nothing I can do about it. Well, your body's naturally at that body yeah. weight because of what you're doing. Your weight set point- It's adapted to that. Your I mean, weight set point's like love. You'll know it when you find it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> you'll, you'll know it when you find it. And it, just like Sal saying, I know there's a there's a, a place where my body likes to be and I constantly push it in and out of that range and I know when I'm doing that. Like I'm right in the middle of that right now to, for me to gain and be 225, 230 pounds and get bigger like that, it's a constant effort. And I can feel it. My body doesn't move as well. I'm not digesting food the same way. Like, I, And it's not bad. It's just I can feel that it's extra work for my body. And then I know when I'm in this just this sweet spot where... You know the and everything from my energy levels to the digestion, digest food digestion to to my poops to yeah. uh, my sleep to my mobility. Like it all when you're when you're at that set point when you really find that like like Sal was saying when you find when you're truly truly healthy and balanced, uh, your body talks to you. It lets you know you're there. Like yeah, you can. I you, think I think that's why it's too subjective. You yeah, know? it's like it's like it, love. It's that's an why idea. It's, like love, bro. it's an idea. You know, it's like internally yeah you're like oh i feel best around this weight and i was like had all these healthy practices in place and you kind of have an ideal idea of where uh where you know you feel the best and so it's like then you identify that but it's like that's that's anything like anybody could come up with whatever you know why well, feel great at this weight and they're like obese you know so it's like whatever like it, it's like whatever you feel like like the set point is for you I mean, it's too subjective what, for me to get behind it. What you really want to think about is when you think of weight set point is you you have a potential. So everybody's born with, you know, their genes and their genes kind of determine their potential. So let's say my potential is 160 pounds to 220 pounds, like naturally, right? If I try to push outside of those, I'm going to really hurt myself, get sick, and I'm going to have to do extreme, extreme measures to go beyond those. So that tends to be my range. I made up that number by those numbers, but that's my range. And to go outside of it would require me to do real extreme things or to be really unhealthy or to take like anabolic steroids or something like that. So 
and, and, and there may be someone else who's got a higher set point or a different set point or a different range. You know, I, there may be a dude that just, you know, he just, he's going to hold on to more muscle than I am. And so his potential is much higher than mine. This is true for a lot of our genetic uh, traits. Uh, like, you know, even intelligence they're showing, you have kind of this range and you can push yourself to the higher limit of that range, but you may not, you might not have the same potential as like a Stephen Hawking's, for example. So, uh, you know, that being said, a huge percentage or, or you have so much power ov- over where you go within that range. And that's determined on your, your lifestyle, your, you know, how you eat and mm-hmm. how you move. So the whole weight set point, you know, theory type of thing. It was made real important by people who were trying to sell right. diets and programs right. and they products. They want you to focus on something specifically. In, in reality, it's not. Don't even. I wouldn't even. Don't even worry about it at all. You, you know, just go where you're going to go. Whatever your goals are, that's your set point. Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, "How can I support the Mind Pump family?" Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com. Put in the discount code Mind Pump for ten percent at the checkout. Also, if you guys want to know how I have this luxurious beard and you want one too, go to BigTopBeardCompany.com. Put in the discount Mind Pump again, but this time for thirty three percent off. Also, you guys, if you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some. Go to bengreenfieldfitness.com forward slash nature bite. Put in the code mind pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. Darby Marie Fit read that taking birth control is counterproductive for building muscle. She believes it said females taking oral contraceptives have lower blood levels of natural anabolic hormones. Is it true? If so, to what extent would it limit? muscle building ability this is hard the, yeah so this is tough because the individual variance is going to be and every, what kind of birth control they're on well yeah, yeah and, and again here's a thing a situation too where taking birth control counterproductive building muscle she believes in the females taking oral contraception yeah, getting so, pregnant is counterproductive have ability. yeah lower <laughs> blood levels of natural anabolic hormones like yeah you know absolutely that that could be true that and that is not ideal for a woman trying to build muscle, but is it still possible? Is she still going to have enough hormones to still build muscle? I mean, well, so they've done, they've actually done uh, a few studies on this where they've tested and they're not perfect. Uh, I don't necessarily like how they conducted the studies, but the results are mixed as to whether or not it reduces uh, athletic performance. Now, does it impact uh, athletic performance? I, of course. I mean, you're changing. You're, you're changing the hormonal signaling in your body. It's going to have an impact on your body. Obviously, you can't get pregnant and you know when you're on it, so it's doing something. It's doing more than just that as well because these hormones don't, don't just do that. They also do other things. For example, there's been some studies that have shown that uh, during ovulation, the risk of ACL tear is actually higher, and they're not quite sure why. They think it might have to do with hmm. the you know estrogen receptors in the ACL tissue, or it could have have to do with the fact that women move a little differently when they're ovulating. This has been observed as well, um, and that may have to do with the ACL. Um, but it, it's for sure going to have an impact on you. Whether or not that's good or bad is based on the individual, and I'll give you an example. If you're a woman that has terrible cramps, terrible PMS, terrible you know, symptoms from your period. Oh, I already know you're going with this. Sometimes taking the pill balances shit out and now you feel better and now you're working out better and you're eating better. And for you, it was productive. It actually contributed Mm. to better results. Excellent point. For other women, uh, it may have the opposite. This Uh, is what I meant by the individual variance because I feel like, sure, it could change. It cannot, it's probably not an ideal environment, right? It's probably not the perfect, but- you may get so many other benefits because of that, right? Mm-hmm. That may end up having giving you a better workout, being more consistent nutritionally, like higher energy levels. So your then your intensity levels better in the gym. I mean, there's so many other things that you could be benefiting from that help actually helps you build muscle, even though you're at a slight disadvantage because you're on birth control. Mm-hmm. So it's it's real. You got to have to you have to personally assess that yourself. But again, like they'll take. You know, a study like this that uh, we're splitting hairs on the difference that it could potentially make. And a lot of times, it, you know, you got to look deeper into the, some of these studies too. like, what are they trying to are they trying to sell something or promote something behind it? And so they're trying to use a scare tactic that, oh, my God, 
you know, this isn't women that take birth control pill. Or your birth control may not be able to build much muscle. So here, take our supplement. This is helps increase your natural hormone. You know, normally a study like this is then attached to something like that that's mm-hmm. promoting you to take something else to help that environment well, because you're at a disadvantage. So they take a little bit of science. That is probably true. Uh, it's just so they can market or put a spin on well, it so they or do, scare you for a headline. So right? when they also do studies on how many female athletes take birth control, it's actually pretty high. It's over 80%, which is a, which is higher than the than the population. So uh, so more female athletes take birth control than just, you know, regular uh, non athletes that are that are women. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're taking it for, you know, any other reason other than, you know, if they're athletes and they train a lot, they probably don't want to get pregnant. They right. I was going to say that could be their, <laughs> you know, they don't want to deal with, uh, with what's going on. That being said, you're seeing a trend now, which we haven't seen since the introduction of, uh, you know, hormonal contraception, which is more and more women, young women are opting to not take birth control. Katrina never has. Yeah, yeah, I know mm. you were saying she, that. Yeah, she's 36 years old and she's never taken anything like that before. You used to not, you know, for a while there, like, w- more, it was growing. More women were taking it, more women were taking it. It was like this whole revolution, right? When it w- first got introduced, it was great because it gave women the power to, like, not get pregnant. So it was, just, it was a real big part of uh, even the feminist movement. But, uh, and it grew, it grew, it grew, it grew over the decades. And now we're starting to see Hmm. less uh, women take them. And uh, the reasons that they're saying they're not taking them is because of some of the side effects, like the weight gain, the Mm -hmm. moodiness, and some of the perceptions that taking birth control, like there's been a couple studies that have shown taking birth control uh, increases certain uh, health risks, uh, like blood clots and um, even some types of cancers, estrogen dominant cancers like uh, breast cancer, for example. So you're seeing more and more women opt out of, of taking them. My personal opinion on birth control is, you know, definitely take, take advantage of your reproductive, uh, you know, abilities. So whether it's condoms or, or birth control, like that's a very smart thing to do. One of the worst things, one of the worst dilemmas you could get into is being, is being pregnant and, you know, being unwanted pregnancy. Um, but besides that, you know, I know a lot of women, I've had a lot of female clients, young female clients in their like 20s who took birth, birth control to for a symptom. It, like they, they've been on birth control since oh, know, they started their period. I know a lot of girls have done that. And it, it wasn't because they weren't, they weren't even having they, sex they at wanted the time. Because it, it helps with their cramps, right? They're, cramps or they had lots of bleeding or whatever. And my, you know, my thought on that is like with anything. If the body's in optimal state of health, and of course there's exception to this, but if it's in an optimal state of health, then uh, you you probably wouldn't need to supplement with a hormone to handle a symptom. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've had female clients that God, you're had gonna, terrible. You're gonna, you're gonna get roasted for a second maybe. <laughs> well, uh, maybe. I, look, I'll tell you what. Um, I, again, I've never Attack been in attack of the vaginas this week, uh, bro. No, 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 no. I'm staying silent. This yeah. whole topic. <laughs> Listen, yeah. here's the thing. Like, good, it's your turn, bro. I took the onslaught there, last no, no, week. No, 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 no. <laughs> if there's anything that you, if there's anything you have to take <laughs> for your body. Uh, in many cases, it's not you don't have to take it. There's something going on with your diet and your lifestyle that is contributing to a lot of these symptoms. So, like I've had uh, female clients who would work on their nutrition and incorporate certain supplements, like uh, evening primrose oil, for example, and make a huge impact on 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 symptoms of PMS, like cramps and pain and stuff. I've had clients with really bad uh, issues, like uh, you know. Um, What's it called? Fibroids, for example, who will change their diet, eliminate sugar, go on a ketogenic diet, and have dramatically lowered uh, amounts of pain and stuff. So, um, so you know, my I, what I, my advice always is: it doesn't matter man or woman. If you have to take something, like you have arthritis or you have this pain or you have this autoimmune issue, and and you have to take these, you know, these drugs, look at the way you're living and see if that can have a positive effect on those symptoms and in many cases a body a human body that's in an optimal healthy uh environment it, it's, your health is optimized you'll find a lot of your symptoms like let's make let's take a basic let's take a basic one there's people that have to take uh medications for constipation 
weekly, every week. They have mm. to take medications for constipation. And they, their doctors don't even, I mean, they don't even consider that maybe there's things in their diet that could yeah. have Isn't major that, impacts isn't on that. crazy? <laughs> Not maybe, for sure, dude. Yeah. Like, when have you ever met anybody who has constipation that wasn't their they're diet? They're just like eating a block of cheese. Yes, dude, their diet <laughs> just... I, can't, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it just doesn't make ah, sense to me. I try and it won't come out. Yeah, I haven't, haven't had fiber in a month, but fuck, yeah. I have no idea what's <laughs> no going on. Well, so that's, a, so that's an what easy one. That? That's an easy one to connect, right? But how about when you go to the doctor and you're like, I have a skin issue. You know, you have psoriasis. Has any of your doctors said to you, you know, Adam, let's look at your diet. Maybe your diet's making not it worse. Not only have they not done that, but I have brought to them several times, like, mm. what do you think about this? Or I've been reading on this, and I and it, could this be this nutrient? And it was you who just recently brought uh, the, the possibility of vitamin D. And I was like, God, you know, this is crazy now that you say this, because when I think about it, I was someone who had tons of sun exposure growing up, never had psoriasis, anything like that. Then all of a sudden, I'm 23, 24 years old, and, and psoriasis comes out of nowhere and then progressively gets worse as I get older. And then I think, like, I, re I remember the dramatic shift in looking at my skin when I was in my 20s because when I started working for 24 Hour Fitness, I was in the gym in, indoors with no sun exposure all day long. I worked 10 hour days, 12 hour days for like years on years. And I became like this super white guy, like Justin White. Like I was, I was used to being so <laughs> our litmus test for white. <laughs> right. And then you come and you bring fine, that, man. you, you bring that to me about vitamin D. And I thought, God, I, I don't know why that never even dawned on me. Like I never even thought of that. And I've already, and, but it sucks because I've been pro, pro, uh, uh, bleh, prodding, prodding my uh, dermatologist, probing. For, yeah, probing is actually what I was looking yeah, yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. Not prodding. Sorry. <laughs> I've been probing my, my probing and prodding. <laughs> yeah, probing my dermatologist for uh, years now. On like, you know, do you think it could be this in my diet? But I you've also noticed changes with just other things, like when you said when you eliminate certain foods, like sugars and processed foods. Yeah, you said your psoriasis. Yeah, yeah, gets a lot better. Yeah, it, it was it was probably the best it, it's ever been in the last couple of years. Was when I was when I run a closer to a well, ketogenic diet. To me, diet. it's fucking crazy to cons that people don't even consider that perhaps their diet and their movement uh, don't have an impact on their uh, some of these symptoms that they may be taking yeah. birth control to control. That's all I'm saying yeah. um, is that you know take a look at that. Look, there's studies now that already show by the way the evening primrose oil that there's a there's a fatty acid in evening primrose oil that for some women it makes a big difference. When it comes to cramping, it just makes a, a massive difference. So, you know, when it comes to, to again, to birth control, very, very individual as to whether or not it's going to give you better, you know, improve your results when it comes to exercise or, de or, or decrease your results. But nothing's going to impact you better than just being healthy overall, I guess is what I want to end that at. So right. uh, mm. check this out. On YouTube, Mind Pump TV drops a new video Every single day. We drop videos on subjects like comparing high-intensity interval training to low-steady-state uh, type cardio. We talk about fasting. We did one where we talked about undulating your calories. And then we do lots of exercise demos where we'll pick workouts and exercises and teach them on video because there's only so much you can learn from listening to us. Sometimes you have to actually see us. And the place to do that is on YouTube. So you go on YouTube, look up Mind Pump TV subscribe to our channel. Also, if you want to ask us a question that we answer on these episodes, the place to do it is on Instagram and the page to do it on is Mind Pump Media. And we also have personal pages. Mine is Mind Pump Sal. Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. And Doug is Mind Pump Doug. The Ego. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes Maths Anabolic, Maths Performance, and Maths Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. 
If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support. And until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.